Hello, my name is Jean-Pierre, and I'm a PhD student in the Robotic Systems Lab at ETH Zurich. Today, I'll be presenting a unified model predictive control framework for whole body dynamic locomotion and manipulation. I will also show you how this framework was applied to our leg mobile manipulator to solve some interesting tasks. When it comes to controlling multi-limbed robotic systems, such as humanoids or quadrupeds, many of the notable achievements in the field can be owed to modular control design. The strategy decomposes the entire control problem into smaller, more manageable sub-modules. For example, one unit could be responsible for generating center of mass motions, another one for contact locations and limb trajectories, and a third one used for manipulation planning. Even though the task-dependent modules are simpler to handle, they are typically decoupled. This leads to tighter domains of operation, since many of the coupling effects between the different components are not being properly exploited. The goal in this work would be to unify dynamic locomotion and manipulation into a single planning framework, and this should be done in a way that encodes the necessary complexity while keeping our problem computationally tractable. So first, I'll just give a brief overview of some of the previous works done on quadrupedal mobile manipulation. On the left, the robot is shown performing coordinated athletic motions in a dynamic throwing task. In this case, the manipulation task is planned offline and is separated from the locomotion planner. Their manipulation planner takes into account the floating base dynamics, arm dynamics, and object dynamics. On the right, the locomotion and manipulation problems are also treated separately. The locomotion planner is based on the ZMP criterion, while the manipulation problem is only solved reactively. So the door opening task in this case is solved by explicitly specifying gripper forces to the whole body tracking controller. The main idea for this work would be to exploit the duality between dynamic locomotion and manipulation to formulate a unifying optimal control problem that can be solved in real time. To this end, we adopt a switch systems perspective when handling contact making and contact breaking events. These appear when defining gate sequences or manipulation contact schedules. We also ensure that the chosen simplified model is able to capture the dynamic coupling between the base, the arm, and the object being manipulated. This also allows us to encode both robot-centric and object-centric tasks in the same cost function. Finally, we want a planner that is able to generate whole body maneuvers that push our system's performance limits without violating any of the physical constraints. Our planning framework is a model predictive controller that is based on the OCS2 solver. This solver is tailored to handle hybrid dynamical systems by treating them as switch systems with predefined modes. Its underlying core algorithm is the sequential linear quadratic technique which can be classified as a variant of differential dynamic programming. This family of trajectory optimization schemes has a linear complexity with respect to the time horizon, which makes it favorable in real-time control applications. However, unlike optimization-based methods, it relies on Riccati-based solvers that are not inherently designed to deal with path constraints. Therefore, before formulating the MPC problem, we address the problem of constraint handling for the real-time SLQ framework. In a previous version of the solver, state input equality constraints were handled with a projection technique, state-only equalities with a quadratic penalty method, and inequality constraints with a relaxed log barrier method. Alternatively, we propose an SLQ variant that is based on the augmented Lagrangian approach, as it is known to help overcome some of the issues associated with penalty or barrier methods, such as numerical conditioning, tightening of the feasible region, or strong violations in the constraints. Additional details on the constrained SLQ MPC algorithm are provided in the reference below. Now we can formulate our MPC problem by first defining our system dynamics. To do that, we start from the full rigid body dynamic equations of floating base system, and we try to extract an appropriate simplified model. If we assume that we have sufficient control authority in the robot's joints, it would be reasonable to consider the unactuated dynamics as a simplified template model in the formulation. However, what we ultimately want is a minimal representation that keeps our problem computationally tractable, but that is also rich enough to capture the base-limb dynamic couplings. 
To this end, we treat the joint velocities as inputs to our system instead of states. Moreover, the generalized velocities of the floating base are replaced with the system's centroidal momentum. We could now define the equations of motion by using the centroidal dynamics formulation. Basically, it describes how the centroidal momentum evolves as a function of external forces and how the derivatives of the generalized coordinates map onto the centroidal momentum. This mapping is given by the centroidal momentum matrix, which is constructed as a function of the system's kinematics and the multibody inertias. Now, what mainly distinguishes our model is its ability to account for the influence of the joint positions and joint velocities on the base motion. In contrast, most template models, such as the linear inverted pendulum or the potato model, do not encode this kind of coupling, since they assume the robot's limbs to be massless. When dealing with whole body manipulation problems, having a planner that is also aware of the robot object dynamic coupling is fundamental for carrying out the task effectively. This could be achieved by augmenting the object state and its corresponding dynamics to the full system flow map. The only assumptions needed here are that the object model structure is known and the object state is observable as it needs to be fed back to the MPC solver. All of the constraints are defined at the level of the potential contact points, which could be in one of two states, open or closed. Therefore, the constraints would depend on a predefined mode schedule that consists of a mode sequence coupled with a set of switching times. Basically, this could correspond either to a gate or to a manipulation schedule. While it is true that a wide variety of manipulation tasks could be handled by supposing a continuous grasp, allowing for an open arm contact generalizes the framework by additionally covering non-prehensile tasks. In such cases, the robot is expected to lose contact with the object during the manipulation period. The constraints on the left have the following implications. The foot of a stance leg should not separate or slip with respect to the ground. Swing legs should track a reference trajectory along the surface normal. A grasp object should remain in contact with the end effector, and forces at open contacts vanish. On the other hand, the inequality constraints on the right guarantee that the arm's joint velocity and torque limits are not violated, and that the feet contact forces remain, remain inside their friction cones. The optimal reference plans for the base and limbs are tracked by a whole body controller that tries to fulfill a set of prioritized tasks. These tasks are formulated in the form of a hierarchical QP that optimizes for the generalized accelerations and contact forces. The joint torques are then computed by inverting the desired dynamics. It is worth noting that even though part of the MPC solution includes the ground reaction forces, we do not aim to track them directly. Instead, we captured their influence by tracking the reference motion they induce on the base. This is because the whole body controller imposes stricter conditions on physical correctness than the planner, planner does, since it relies on a more accurate model. As a result, the forces can be adjusted if they happen to violate any higher priority objectives while trying to keep the robot balanced. On the other hand, arm contact forces outputted by the MPC planner are sent as direct references to the QP. This is because the whole body controller has no knowledge of the manipulated object dynamics. Therefore, it would not be possible to define a task on the level of the object's motion. We performed various experiments, both in simulation and on real hardware. The experiments were divided into two main categories, ones done in free motion and others involving object manipulation tasks. All of the upcoming task descriptions were encoded in this single cost function, which allows us to switch between either commanding the robot space, commanding its end effector, or specifying a target for the manipulated object. We start with a simple, te simple test on the real system, where we demonstrate two different dynamic gates, a trot and a flying trot. A high penalty is imposed on the arm joint motion to keep it at a nominal configuration. In this case, the planner treats the arm as a lumped mass with respect to the base. It is clear that in such cases, the arm does not pay, play any role with regards to balancing. Alternatively, reducing the joint weights allows the planner to exploit the base limb coupling by using the arm as a tail that helps in balancing the robot. This behavior is showcased for a static balancing scenario where the arm moves so as to shift the center of mass in a direction that would redistribute the contact forces equally. 
Another scenario involves the robot trotting with a relatively high velocity before abruptly switching directions. As it accelerates in one direction, the arm swings in the opposing direction. This dynamic movement helps the base accelerate while counteracting the angular momentum induced by the tangential contact forces. In the second set of free motion experiments, we focus on commanding the manipulator's end effector. We carry out a task involving the manipulator reaching out to grasp an object. The perceived behavior is one where the torso clearly adapts its pose in coordination with the arm's movement. This highlights the importance of including the robot's full kinematic model in the planning phase. By that, we obtain motion plans that would optimally exploit the kinematic redundancy in our system to help achieve the end effector tracking task. A second scenario consists of sending references to both the base and the gripper simultaneously. The gripper's position with respect to the inertial frame is fixed, while the base is commanded to trot back and forth. This is done while having the robot carry an unmodeled 2 kg load to demonstrate robustness against modeling uncertainties. Here we see the robot moving a 10 kg load for two cases, one with torque limits and one without torque limits in the planner. In both cases, the task is achieved. However, the constrained version results in the robot naturally extending its arm closer to a singular configuration. This allows it to apply the forces required to drag the load. Therefore, it is clear that proper handling of these constraints is essential for avoiding unattainable forces at arbitrary arm configurations. As mentioned before, due to the way we formulate the manipulation constraints, we are also able to tackle non-prehensile tasks such as throwing an object or dynamically pushing a load to a target position. Both of them have a closed contact initially, followed by an open contact after a switching time of 0.6 seconds. The purpose here is to compare the centroidal dynamics model used in this work to the single rigid body dynamics used in several previous works, both with and without augmenting the object dynamics. The comparison is based on a dynamic lifting task, where various desired lifting times are specified for each case. What we notice is that it is possible to achieve a wider range of fast lifting motions if we include the dynamic effects of the arm and the object in the planner. In this final example, the robot is required to push or pull a heavy spring-loaded door. We model the door as a 1 degree of freedom mass spring damper system. The door angle which is fed back to the whole body planner is estimated from the gripper's position and the door's kinematic parameters. In both scenarios, we observe that the planner discovers physically consistent plans that drive the door to its desired angle regardless of any model mismatches. To further demonstrate the robustness of our approach, we apply an external disturbance while the robot is pulling the door. During this period, it is clear how the planner still adjusts the contact forces according to the current door angle. When the disturbance vanishes, the robot manages to pull the door back to the assigned 90 degree set point. Finally, a combination of different cost functions could be used to construct a more complex sequence of behaviors such as opening and walking through a spring-loaded door. Thank you for your attention.